Hi all, it's another edition of Therapy Tip Thursday, but before I get to that, may I bring your attention to my new tank top, courtesy of Spiritual Gangster. I bought it in uh, here in Calgary at uh, Soul Hot Yoga. So thanks guys, I really appreciate uh, you setting me up with some threads. So can we mark that for a second? Gold lettering. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on. So today I wanted to talk about tennis elbow. It was, um, or it is a subject that's been on my mind because I have a friend of mine who has just recently been diagnosed with tennis elbow. He's also someone who has attended my yoga classes before and for a considerable amount of time. Not recently, but <laughs> used to a few years ago. And, um, and so I thought I would use that as inspiration for today's subject. So, what is tennis elbow? Well, first of all, you don't need to be a tennis player to get tennis elbow. Tennis elbow is um, an inflammation or a tear in the tendons of the forearm muscles that attach to your outer elbow, okay? So the extensor muscles specifically of the forearm, so the muscles, and there, there are quite a few of them, um, that do this to the wrist, okay? So they extend the wrist. Now if you want to test that on yourself, you just touch your wrist, pull up, you can feel these extensor muscles, four good ones right in there that start to contract. And their tendons attach to this bony piece on the outside of your elbow, which is the base of your upper arm bone, okay? So these tendons can become inflamed, they become torn and, uh, and uh, you know, misused because of activities that we do. So yes, tennis is part of that, right? Because we extend the wrist, right? And there's a lot of that motion. Hammering is the same thing. Um, anything where you use a lot of uh, a lot of extension in the wrist, even on the computer, if you um, spend a lot of time on the computer using the mouse and your setup isn't quite ideal and you have an extension in the wrist like this, can help to promote tennis elbow. So really, what that means in terms of symptoms is we get a lot of pain in the elbow. Sometimes that radiates up and down the arm into the wrist. Sometimes it involves numbness. Um, I already said pain, but numbness, loss of strength, those sort of things, and mobility as well is affected. So what can we do about this, first of all? So even if you don't necessarily think you have tennis elbow, but you want to um, make sure that this doesn't happen to you, if you think you are high risk in terms of what activities you, you do, if you're a carpenter or a plumber or that sort of thing, um, what can you do about it? Well, I'm going to give you tips. I'm going to give you four tips to help avoid and or help you rehab from your tennis elbow from a yoga perspective, okay, yoga perspective. So the very, very first thing, if you have it already, if you've been diagnosed, of course listen to your doctor or your healthcare uh, practitioner, um, but it's to rest, okay, to rest area because there isn't a lot of blood flow into tendons, right, they, um, they just don't heal very well. So you don't want to push it, give yourself that right amount of rest. That means brace it if you can. Don't use you know, that arm at all for a period of time if you could. Um, if you know, your lifestyle or whatever that you do in day-to-day -day activities doesn't allow for that completely, um, the brace will help, yes, but even switching to your non-dominant hand. Easier said than done. If you're on a computer working, uh, yes, resting your, your injured or your sore side isn't necessarily something that's going to be practical as you fumble around trying to figure out how to use the mouse with your left hand. But um, that is the best way to help you know, rest 100%. So give it some time to heal. Uh, talk to your doctor about that. It all depends on, on how bad your, your uh, tennis elbow is. Um, the next thing that you can do once you're given the go-ahead to start to use these muscles again um, is to use isometric contractions. So what does that mean? Well, um, you know, I mentioned my tank top earlier, but I really did wear it so that we could see things in the arm, right? So what does an isometric, excuse me, contraction mean? That means the contraction of the muscle where the muscle doesn't lengthen or shorten, okay? It contracts in one length, if you will. So if, I, if I'm here and I let my arm hang down, right, or even if I just hold it up here, and I tense, right? And it can help with the forearm and the arm in general to make a, a fist, although sometimes gripping exercises aren't ideal for tense elbow. But if we, if we make a gentle fist, but then we focus on contracting the muscles of the forearm, uh, we, you know, we can contract the bicep isometrically, the tricep isometrically, those sort of things. I'm not moving my elbow, I'm not moving my wrist, I'm contracting, kind of 
uh, doing the whole Arnold pose, whatever fitness um, competitor pose, where you flex without moving. Okay, so with for your tennis elbow on your arm, you can flex your arms next to you. Okay, just reach down, flex, squeeze, however you want to describe it. Those those muscles. So that's the second piece. The third piece then is to remember too that sometimes we become injured from overuse. Sometimes we become injured by uh, through underuse of a muscle. Um, so whatever the case is for you, I would recommend once you start to move the joint again and start to increase some strengthening ex exercises where it's either, either eccentric, excuse me, or concentric. So whether the muscle is lengthening with load with weight or shortening with weight, um, that you consider the whole range of motion of the joint. Sometimes what happens is we have a muscle or muscle groups that are really strong in a certain range of motion. So if you hammer a lot, right, or um, or you're always doing something with your elbow bent in some sort of flexion position, um, your your biceps won't strengthen 100% in you know, their full range, either this way or this way. Um, same thing goes for your extensor muscles this way or, or this way. So think about strengthening exercises that allow you to flex and extend, extend and flex the required joint, the ones that you're trying to hone in on first, so that you can work those muscles in their entire range of motion and strengthen them throughout their entire range, okay? Now, no I haven't said stretch yet, <laughs> so we're at the fourth point, the fourth tip, and, um, and that is to, yes, to stretch. I kind of think strengthening and stretching can go hand in hand. As you strengthen a muscle, you cue it to release, right? It has a greater intensity to, to release. Um, you're also cueing the um, antagonist muscles to also release in, in, in some ways. So, uh, but if you wanted to do something that was more specific for your stretching, strengthening kind of um, thing, then I would add that in after the strength. Okay, so start to work your range of motion in your wrist, right? Not just an extension, but also an inflection. Same thing in the elbow, okay? Same thing in the shoulder. With the tennis elbow, don't just focus on the elbow or the forearms, right? Um, it's caused by stuff going on the wrist, yes, but you also want to think higher up as well. Think about the upper arm, biceps, triceps, right? The extensors and flexors of your, of your elbow. Um, and then also what's going on at the shoulder, okay? So are you sitting like this? poorly like I was just doing, or do you have strong external rotators? Do you have uh, strong muscles that are going to help to retract the shoulder blade and keep it in a good position? So figure out, and sometimes that can help too, right? If, if you can't um, start to rehab lower down right away, you can start to focus on strengthening and, um, and improving mobility up the arm, okay, into the, into the shoulder and even the neck will help. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions for me, by all means, you can post them down in the comments and, uh, and let me know. You can email me at info at And of course, remember that your yoga practice can hurt uh, or heal you or help you. So any of those things that we just described today, take those into your yoga practice as well. Even though we're not going to specifics today about that, um, just be mindful, okay? Your yoga practice is there to help you to strengthen and at the same time gain flexibility, but make sure that you talk to uh, a yoga practitioner and a yoga instructor that knows what they're doing when it comes to tennis elbow or any other injury, okay? So comments below, comments by email, and I'll see you next week. Thanks guys.